Okay. Well, on this table here, we have a motherboard. Um, it is called an Asus M2N SLI Deluxe. It was released in, let's say, mid-2007. It has 4 gigs of RAM, um, 2 PCI Express slots, and, as you can see, a CPU with no heat sink on it. Just 4 screws that we're going to be using to put our heat sink on. Um, right here, on this diagram, you can see our heat sink. It is a water-cooled heat sink and um, it also comes with diamond uh, thermal grease so it's really high quality. Here's the stuff that we got. We got the stuff from heatsinkfactory.com um, It's the EK Supreme Universal CPU water cooling block uh, the Danger Den High Flow fitting, those are the nipples that fit into these two holes right here. And then we have the IC Diamond 24 karat thermal compound. And that's the diamond stuff that we're going to put on top of the CPU. You can see a little bit of it already right here. I haven't put much on it yet though because that, that was just a test. I'm going to do more later. Now if you turn around and you look over here you will see what we are using for our water cooling system. This is not like what your standard person would do if they were going to water cool. Usually they'd have like a little block that sits inside of the case. Um, but this is a Jalabo, um, uh, I guess it's called like a universal cooling machine. It's a model FE500. It's usually used um, like in science labs or in hospitals for cooling, um, especially used with uh, like laser surgeries and stuff. And so we have had this, and it wasn't being used for anything. So we decided that we would hook up this water cooling machine to our new heat sink that I just um, got from that heat sink factory that I showed you earlier. And we have two tubes hooked up to this. Uh, the water is being pumped through here and it's set to two degrees centigrade. So um, that's the temperature that we have on this water block right here. So it's really cold right now. We, don't, we can't go below um, 2 degrees centigrade right now because at zero, of course, it freezes and we don't have any um, Freon or other stuff that you put in the water to keep it to like lower the freezing temperature. So we have to keep it above freezing. So we decided we'd set it at 2 just to leave a little like leeway so that, you know, it, if if it were to drop a little bit, we wouldn't have any problems. So this is what we're going to be cooling that motherboard. Let's go back over here. Okay. Over here's our case that the motherboard will fit into. It's just a generic, um, I think it's an old Antec, but I'm not sure of the model because they don't print it anywhere on the case. I've been actually looking for a long time and I couldn't find it. And this big number here, that's not the model number, so don't think I'm being an idiot. That's the case, just a standard uh, mini tower ATX case. I don't, I usually when I build computers I don't care much about the cases, so that's what we're using. This is one of the best solid state drives ever made. It's 32 gigs. We don't need much because we're using a thing called micro XP, which only takes about 200 megabytes of space on a clean install. So um, it's a, a, a de-bloated version of XP. So this solid state drive will be perfect for that. It is 220 megabytes per second, I think. 
Our next component is an Antec power supply, uh, 650 watts. Um, of course, they had to be green, um, but it is still very good quality. And the last thing, uh, a fairly good video card, one gigabyte of DDR3, it's a GTS 250. This is a PCI video card and it will be going, of course, in this PCI slot right here. So that's about it for the components. Um, probably tomorrow I'll be showing you how uh, we're going to install the water block and hopefully be able to water, uh, I mean, hopefully we'll be able to overclock past 3.2 because this is a, um, AMD Athlon 3.2 gigahertz 512 kilobyte cache CPU. So we're going to try to get, get it at least past 3.2 gigahertz, uh, probably to 4 gigahertz if we can. Um, and when we get the uh, non freezing uh, coolant stuff, or the lower freezing cooling stuff, we. Um, we'll hopefully be able to bring it even low, even lower than that and hopefully be able to overclock even higher than 4 gigahertz. So that's about it for this video. Uh, check out part 2 on my YouTube channel. Thank you.